Hello there. In this video lesson, I would like to introduce you to phonetics. In this first session, we're going to try to probe into three main questions. First, what is phonetics? Second, what do we study in phonetics? And number three, how do we produce sounds? What is it that talking machine we have that produces sound? That talking machine that is actually responsible for the production of sounds. So follow with me. Of course, phonetics is another important branch of linguistics that studies language. And language is so important to our lives. We live in a world of language. We talk to our friends, to our wives, to our husbands, to our lovers, our teachers, our parents, and even to our enemies using language. We talk to bus drivers, to taxi drivers, and even to some people we don't know, strangers. We talk face to face to them, we talk over the phone. There is hardly we can find a moment of our lives free from talking, free from words. And even in our dreams, we talk and are talked to. We also talk when there is no one to answer. Some of us talk aloud in our sleep. We talk even to our dogs, our cats, our pets, and sometimes to people or to ourselves when there is nobody around us. Language is everywhere. The possession of language distinguishes humans from other animals. We are distinguished because we have language, we use language, we speak language. To understand our humanity, one must understand the nature of language that makes us humans. According to some African tribes, and this is very interesting, we all become humans because we all know at least one language. In some African tribes, a person is referred to as Kinto, translated to English as a thing. But when that person starts to speak at least one language, it becomes referred to as a person, Muntu. So according to these traditions and according to these African tribes, we all become humans because we all know at least one language. The question here is, what does it mean that we know a language? Let's look at this example. A two-year-old child going upstairs heard his mother say, hold on, hold on. Now guess what he responded? He said, I am holding on, I am holding on. What happened to this person? Why did he respond this way? The second example was about a person who was asked by his boss to write a sign in front of his house that says, keep out, keep out. What happened? He made a mistake and he wrote, keep out, keep out. Why? What's the reason behind this mistake? Now, let's explain exactly what happened in these two examples. In the first example, the boy was still in his early stage of his first native language acquisition. So mistakes are something inevitable. While in the second example, English was maybe the second language of the man. So that's why the mistakes are also inevitable. The two examples show that these two individuals couldn't tell at which sound the first word starts and at which sound the second begins. In fact, when you know a language, you can speak and be understood by others who know that language. This means you have the capacity to produce sounds that signify certain meanings and to understand or interpret sounds produced by others. If you know a language, you have the ability to know the sounds that are produced by the individuals that you are talking to, and you have the unconscious ability to exactly know what is the last letter that the first word ends with, and the first letter or the first sound that the second word starts with. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know a language, you have no difficulty in segmenting the continuous sounds of speech. Everyone who knows a language knows how to segment sentences into words and words into sounds, and knows exactly what is the last sound that exists in the first word 
and what is the first sound that exists in the second word. And this is exactly what you know when you know a language. And this is exactly the reason behind the mistakes were made by the two examples we have seen. So what is phonetics? Generally, phonetics can be defined as the scientific study of speech sounds. It's actually a branch of linguistics that focuses on the classification and production of speech sounds. But let me rephrase it this way. Phonetics is not only about speech sounds, it's also about our human tacit knowledge that we have towards the sounds that we use in our, in our languages. It's about the tacit or the unconscious knowledge that we have towards the sounds that we use in the languages we speak. But how can we prove that we have an unconscious knowledge of the sounds that we use in our languages? Look at this example. For example, French people speaking English often pronounce words like this and that as if they were spelled this and that. Imagine a French speaker want to say, this is a very beautiful morning. He will say, this is a very beautiful morning. Why? This exactly shows that the English sounds represented by the initial letters are not part of the French sound system sometimes. Different languages have different sound systems and the linguistic repertoire that is actually there in the minds of, of speakers is hugely influenced by the knowledge, the unconscious knowledge of, that speakers have towards the, the sound systems that they have in their minds. So the French mispronunciation reveals that the speaker's unconscious knowledge of this fact. Let's take this time another example of an Egyptian teacher of English who would like to say to his students, take this please. The way it's going to be pronounced is the following. Take this Belize. Take this Belize. Now what's wrong or what's the reason behind exactly this mispronunciation? In fact, again, it's exactly what happened to the French speaker and the mispronunciation of the French speaker. Knowing the sound system of a language includes more than just knowing the sounds that exist in the sound system of your mother tongue. It's more about knowing which sounds may start a word, end a word, and which sounds can follow another sound. When you know a language, you know exactly what we call the phonotactics, the combination of sounds in a word. What are possible combinations and what are impossible combinations of sounds. In Egyptian English, in Egyptian Arabic, it's impossible to find two adjacent consonants without any actually vowel in between. So that's why please as a word is changed or mispronounced as Belize. The insertion of a vowel there, it's because of the knowledge, of the unconscious knowledge that you have towards the mother tongue. And this influences the learning of the second language. So knowing the sound system of, of language, it's more than just knowing the sounds. It's actually knowing also the, about the possible combinations and the impossible combinations of sounds. So what do we study in phonetics? To do phonetics, it's very important to master the use of international phonetic alphabets. What is international phonetic alphabets? What do you mean by the IPA? The IPA are international uh, symbols used in order to represent exactly the, the sounds in a consistent way. But why not just using orthography? Orthography is actually proven to be very weak in representing the sounds. And international phonetic alphabets are actually symbols that we can use in order to consistently represent each sound by a symbol. Orthography is very weak in doing this. Why? Because of these examples. Look at this example. 
If we take the example of this sentence, did he believe that Caesar could see the people seize the seas? The silly amoeba stole the key to the machine. We can notice from this example that the representation of one sound, which is E, is actually represented differently using the alphabetic spelling or orthography. Sometimes, as you can see, the E is represented by just one letter, either E or I or Y. Sometimes also it is actually represented by combination of letters like EA or double E or A or IE or others. This again shows that there is no consistency when it comes to the representation of sounds by orthography. Another example to prove the weakness of orthography is this. Consider again this sentence. My father wanted many a village Dane badly. My father wanted many a village Dane badly. Now, the same letter A, as you can notice, is exactly representing different sounds. The A in the word father is representing exactly the vowel A while the A in the word Dame is actually representing the, 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 the vowel sound A, while again the A in the word badly, it's actually representing a different vowel sound, which is A. We can say again that orthography or the alphabetic spelling system is very weak in consistently representing sounds through letters. The same letter can represent actually different sounds and this is the weakness again and this is the inconsistency of, of the spelling system. Another proof for, of the weakness of orthography is exactly this example again. If you read this, shoot character Thomas physics either deal rough nation coat glacial theater plane we can notice again that orthography here is very weak in representing the sounds in a consistent way why because sometimes one sound is actually represented orthographically through a combination of two letters for example the sound sh is represented by combining the letters s and the letter h again the sound F is orthographically represented by a combination of two letters, the letter G and the le letter H. Again, the sound F is actually represented through a combination of the letter P and also of the letter H. So, what is, what is the consistency? So, there is no consistency when it comes to representation of sounds through the use of orthography. So, that's why we need exactly as some symbols that will represent the sound in a consistent way. Now another proof for this, for the weakness of orthography is this example again. Look at these words. Mnemonic, autumn, resign, ghost, sword, debt, whole, right, and many other examples you can find in, in languages. We can see here that actually the some letters in words are actually mute, are actually not pronounced at all when it comes to speaking. So what is that consistency again? Sometimes if you take the example of the word no, the K as a letter is actually sometimes representing the K sound. But in some, let some words, the K is actually muted it's actually not pronounced at all. So it is again that consistency or that re-representation of sounds by using alphabetic spelling. So we can say that spelling system or orthography in general is very weak. It's not enough in, the, in representing in a consistent way the sounds that we have in our languages. 
So that's why it's very important to master the IPA symbol or the International Phonetic Symbol. What do we study also in phonetics? When we do phonetics, we try to learn exactly how sounds are produced. It's about how sounds are produced. It's about the production and the classification of speech sounds. When we do phonetics, it's very important to study the places of articulation of each sound that we are producing, and also their manner of articulation, and also the voicing. That's exactly what we call articulatory phonetics. In articulatory phonetics, we try to define each sound, how it is pronounced, what is the manner where it is pronounced, and what's its voicing features. So in doing phonetics, it's very important to go through all of these three parameters. The place of articulation, the manner of articulation, and the voicing. So which part of your body talks? The production of any sounds involve the use of different organs, such as the mouth, such as the tongue, such as the lips. Yes, this is very true. But phoneticians prefer to go deeper in exactly understanding how sounds are produced. They believe that, that exactly the mouth, lips, and also uh, the, the, the tongue are crucial organs used to do that. But phoneticians also believe that most speech sounds are produced through three main stages. The first one is exactly what we call the respiration stage. At this stage, speech sounds are produced by pushing air through the lens in the respiratory system. At this stage, we are just talking about an air, not yet a sound. The second stage is phonation stage. It is exactly when the air becomes a voice. At this stage, we're not talking about an air, but we are talking about a voice. Exactly at the larynx, through which the opening of the vocal cords helps in making the air becomes a voice. The last stage is the articulation stage. We call it the articulation stage. At this stage, we are no longer talking about air. We no longer actually talk about a voice. At this stage, we talk about sounds. At this stage, articulators play a crucial role by stopping the air at the vocal tract. In the vocal tract, we have different articulators like the alveolar ridge, like the lips, like the upper and the lower teeth, like the, the, the palate, like the soft palate. These articulators are actually shaping the, exactly the sound that we want to produce. They play a crucial role in exactly producing different sounds in different places, be it the oral cavity or the nasal cavity. Now, these are exactly the three main stages we have in order to, to make a sound become really a sound. Uh, respiration stage, the phonation stage, and also the articulation stage. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please stay tuned for more coming videos and for another video that will actually tell you exactly what are the sounds that we are producing. Are they consonants or vowels? Stay tuned. Bye-bye.